going on everybody welcome back to full throttle auto my name is harris and today as you see the title we are actually upgrading the rear brakes on this car to a big brake kit i'm super excited let's get into it here's some of the boxes or here are the boxes that uh, it got shipped in this i already as you can see opened up because i was a little confused i was trying to figure out what was all this but this is the emergency brake conversion so this is something you're going to need uh, when upgrading the rear brakes uh, because the emergency brake is set up to to the actual caliper uh, so they do have a conversion for you to upgrade that as you can see here essentially what it's going to do from what i can tell is this is going to pass the fluid when you pull the brake push the fluid through and then uh, make the caliper clamp onto the rotor uh, and this is something that you attach to the hub and then you attach the i'm guessing the caliper to it <clears throat> but we'll we'll get into that once we get into installing this but that's what that is and i mean honestly it's very nice it's finished very well it is a little bit heavy but um uh, nothing too crazy there is a little bit of weight to it i'm not sure if this is billet or not i don't have any material that explains everything on what the materials they uh used on it i'm gonna assume this is like aluminum maybe that's what that is now we're gonna go into the actual brakes i'm not gonna lie i snuck snuck a peek into it just to look at it and i'm in love so let's do that so you get greeted with this nice big old r1 concepts big brake kit flap you go in it's covered up with some nice foam open that up and here are the calipers now the calipers is what really i'm just truly in love with this is what i looked at and honestly i mean the beds are already in there everything's already in there from what it looks like it's ready to go but i have to admit like just holding this in my hands feels lighter than the brembos that i have in front and that alone and also looking at this it looks like they're not as big now these are the rear so maybe they're not as big but they're still four piston but it looks like it would clear way more wheels than what those Brembo's that I put up front and so I'm truly truly excited about this try to get the closest color that I have for the front but it looks like this one's gonna be a little lighter but I'm okay with it but absolutely in love you get the you get the calipers then you get lines you get a little line holder banjo uh you get banjo bolts in here but you also actually get some extra ones in here so that's pretty cool uh you got some loctite or thread locker whatever you want to call it and of course all your bolts that you need and then below this is where all the rotors are so let me give me a moment to grab that for you all right so under there you have another foam piece and then you get your rotor now i went with a two-piece rotor you can also go with a uh floating rotor but I'm super stoked about this. I wanted the two piece for sure. Now I do want to mention right off the bat, this believe it or not is bigger than the front. This is a 13 uh, inch rotor and the fronts are 12.6. So it is slightly bigger in the back, but I'm okay with that. And they didn't offer the smaller version for the back. So I'm perfectly fine with that because these cars are rear biased. And of course, this one is vented unlike the stock one which is not vented it's just a single small but we'll get into that when we get it all swapped out and the two-piece rotor as you can see is very nicely done it's got there you can choose what color hat you want i went with just black i could have went with the same blue as there but i just didn't want to go that far i just want to leave it black and of course you can choose obviously their r1 concepts uh logo as well since this hat was black i went with uh obviously that's going to be white and then over here you can choose if you want white or black and i went with the black option just because i like it better so here's everything we got i'm super excited now we're just going to go ahead and get into installing this i'm sure it's not going to be easy easy but it shouldn't be too hard and i am going to have some help i'm not going to do this on my own because it's going to be a long day today so i gotta uh, i gotta get this done as quickly as possible so we're gonna go to my buddy's house the guy that you guys have seen me seen in the vlogs and other videos before he's helping me with my 240 currently so we're gonna go to him and he's gonna help us out get this all installed shouldn't be too hard but still two two people is better than one so let's go ahead and go to his house and get these installed and just like always jack up the car remove the wheel and make sure that you have chucks in the front of the car since you're working on the rear on the first side that we started on which was on the passenger side we ended up removing the old brake line first after disconnecting the brake line from the main steel line then we loosened up the emergency brake bolts and bracket sure. 
Then before getting to the caliper, we ended up removing the bracket for the brake line. After that was done, we then removed the caliper bolts from the bracket. And finally, we removed the bracket bolts and the bracket good itself. Yeah, good and tight. Yeah, good and tight. After all that was done, we then got to removing the rotor itself. And as you can see, we didn't need to use heat on the rotor bolt that holds it against the hub. After using the heat, then we used the help of an impact driver to get the bolt removed. Using the persuasion of the BFH, we finally were able to get the rotor off. Oh, yeah. Using my new favorite tool, the brake hub resurfacing tool that you use with a drill to clean around the lug studs and the hub itself, and then we continue to clean the lug studs themselves with a wire brush to get as much rust off before we step on the new component. Removing the dust shield was actually fairly easy. The bolts came off with virtually no heat. The passenger side used no heat. The driver's side used just a little bit of heat to get it off. I thought that was going to be the worst. And then we used the angle grinder to get it off the rest of the way because we didn't want to remove the hub itself. Once everything old was off, the new stuff started going on. Obviously, first the rotor. Then we attached the caliper to the emergency brake upgrade bracket. We put those on first to verify how many shims we were going to need to use to space out the caliper with the rotor perfectly. We got lucky, we only needed two on the so back for each good. bolt. I mean it... Nope. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. That's good, the handy dandy flashlight that's been on that The little life. hit that we experienced here was because the rotor wasn't fully Where flat against the hub and so it rubbed a little against the pads. Spin it again. So, and as you can see yeah, with just two good. shims Pretty on the there. rear bolts we were able to perfectly yeah. line up the calipers with the Over rotor the so nothing there, was rubbing. Basically in the middle of the rotor. If we spread this apart, After we were done with the caliper and the spacing, then we routed the cable for the emergency brake through the hole that comes with the bracket slash emergency brake upgrade, so that way we can get it all connected before we tidy everything up. Yeah. This. Then we started attaching the brake line from the, the emergency brake okay. upgrade to the Here. main steel line. There are two lines that you're going to have with this kit. One that goes to the main steel line and one that goes from the actual emergency brake upgrade system into the caliper. Also, don't forget to attach your new bracket that holds up the line. The new brake line that attaches to the steel line is actually pretty cool. It doesn't use a clip that holds that brake line to the bracket. It actually uses just an additional bolt that you use to bolt it down. After you've tightened the banjo bolt for the line that goes into the caliper, as you can see here, there's also a nut that you want to make sure is tight on that brake line that goes to the fitting that attaches to the banjo bolt. And as you can see, the vents for the vented rotors do matter which direction they go. As you can see here, this is how we have it attached because this is the proper way of getting air through the rotors. And once everything's attached, then go ahead and make sure everything's good and it clears. Test your wheels to make sure they clear and then repeat the steps on the next side. And are better.
for. Once everything's fully attached, you're going to go ahead and want to yeah, bleed man, the brakes. We started off with the passenger rear, then driver yeah, rear, yeah, then go. front passenger, Sorry. then front <laughs> driver. So basically to go from furthest to closest where the brake uh, master is. And for the brake fluid, we use Mato 660.4 fluid because it's rated the best for performance. There it is. The car is finally got a full good braking system. And honestly, I'm super stoked. As in the beginning, I don't think I mentioned it verbally, but I think there was text in the beginning where I mentioned uh, this is in partnership with R1 Concepts. Yes, it is. It's not a paid promotion. It's not a sponsorship. It's nothing like that. It's maybe at best an ambassadorship. I contacted them to see what they could do. They gave me a small discount um, knowing that I was going to make this video and that's pretty much it. But that doesn't that's not gonna like adjust what I say about the product or anything like that. I will say a few things. One, everything is so close in spec that sometimes when you're putting the brakes on or when you're putting this kit on, it seems like you might have to like unscrew, like for instance, the um, emergency brake upgrade thing that they provide with the bracket it almost looks like you have to spin it because the lines are gonna hit some suspensions, uh, some some parts of the suspension and stuff like that. So it's, it's tight, but it does fit. So I gotta give kudos to R1 Concepts for building that kit that's like just everything fits the way it's supposed to and it's so close you couldn't even tell if it's, if it's, if it's supposed to be that way or if it's too close. Uh, so kudos on them for being so, so um, being in such tight tolerances for uh, creating this stuff. I gotta give them mad props. For weight, a lot of people are gonna ask, wait, how much did I increase? I know the stock rotors were about nine pounds. I, I try to weight a lot of this stuff. The stock rotors were about nine pounds that's used and they've been on there for a while. So it's very possible they're a little bit more when new. And uh, ones that I put on there, I think were 13 or 13 and a half or something like that. So honest, honestly, going to this brake, brake kit for the difference in rotor weight compared to size, worth it, 100%. I'll take that weight increase considering that I'm getting vented brakes, which the stock ones are definitely not. There's no uh, vent, vents on them. And the fact that they're bigger in the sense of uh, diameter, which are 13 inch versus 11 or 11.1, .1, something like that, worth it, 100%. For the calipers with the pads and the bracket on the stock one, I think it was, it ended up being like 11 pounds or something like that. I can't, can't say for sure. I'm sure I'll have the imagery. So that versus just the caliper on the new one, I think we were pretty much similar in weight. Um, Granted, that's caliper for uh, the new one versus caliper, bracket, and pads. I'm sorry, caliper for the new one, wood pads. And then the uh, old stuff is caliper, uh, bracket for the caliper, and the used pads, which was nothing was left. So they were very close in weight. The only difference, the only major difference that's going to be there is going to be the bracket system with the upgraded emergency brake or e brake or whatever you want to call it. Uh, setup that's gonna weigh a little bit that's gonna give that weight a little bit more uh, amount for the new stuff once again worth it um, I already took this car on a track day so this is a few days doing this outro a few days after took the car out on the track day and the rear brakes helped the front so much uh, granted I am using a new pad that I've never used before on the front which is the ABC blues but still with these new brake or with these new brakes in the back, the big brake kit in the back, I experienced zero heat issues in the front. You got to understand. Last time around, I ran the Moto 600 fluid, which was still a very high temperature performing fluid, and I had um, what brake pads was I running on the front? I think it was Hawks. Uh, I can't remember exactly which ones, like HP Pluses or something like that. And there was a crap ton of uh, heat shatter. It was constantly like vibrating after a lap or two. It just couldn't handle it. Because these cars do have a slight rear bias, 
uh, the rear upgrading the rear brakes is actually going to help you with braking in general and it's going to help keep that heat away from the front as well so with this upgrade i noticed a huge difference i could brake later i never had issues with heat soak or heat uh, shatter or anything like that it performed well the only thing i will say the only problem that i did have is we didn't bleed him just good enough we thought we did for sure because we were bleeding for a while but it looks like we didn't bleed him well and that's the reason for that is because on the emergency brake assembly the the nipple the bleed nipple and the banjo bolt that connects there with the line are so close it's so hard to bleed that it's extremely hard so the only thing that i would and i am going to send them an email letting them know this but the only thing i would recommend to our concepts is figuring out how to um, separate this two a little bit more because they're so close it's very very hard to bleed there's i'm sure there's a tool out there that would let you get that close and still bleed it okay but we didn't have the tools and my buddy's got a lot of tools so the fact that we didn't have the tool to do it uh, tells me it's just a little too close so that's the only gripe i have about this kit is that bleed nipple on the emergency brake assembly otherwise this kit is absolutely amazing and i 100 percent wish I did it on the front and why do I say that because these rotors that I got now granted you have the option for floating rotors and two-piece rotors I I prefer the two-piece just because they're gonna be lighter and you just have to replace the outer ring of the rotor instead of the whole thing so two-piece for sure and you also do have the option of uh, you know slotted slotted and drilled just drilled and stuff like that the reason I would definitely want to do this to the front, one main reason is the rotors. The rotors are made for this car, so you don't have to run hub-centric rings to center the rotor on the vehicle. With the kit that I did on the front, which you guys can check out the video, it's linked in the playlist for the Honda Accord, that requires a hub-centric ring to center the rotor because that rotor is not meant for a Honda Accord. It's meant for a Nissan Rogue, to be more specific, with third row speeding. So, the, the brake rotor itself doesn't sit properly on the car, so you require a hub-centric ring. Without a hub-centric ring, then you can run a hub-centric ring on the wheels to help you center those onto the car instead of the rotors. With the fronts having a hub-centric ring on the brakes, you can't run hub-centric rings on the uh, wheels as well if you want the uh, wheels and the rotors to actually sit at, on top of each other like they should, to mate up. So that is the biggest reason I 100% would guarantee, would love to go back and redo the fronts and do them with the R1 concept stuff. And the other reason is the calipers. These calipers, yes, they're for the rear, so they are slightly smaller, but they're still four piston calipers and they clear these wheels way easier than the front four piston calipers. Once again, these are rear, so they're gonna be slightly smaller. But I bet, I will put money on it that even with the six piston calipers that R1 Concepts offers for the front on these, they would clear the uh, wheels way better than the Brembo's, or I guess they're not Brembo's. Somebody said in the comments, those aren't Brembo's. They're Honda Genesis, Coupe, big brake kit. I thought it was Brembo that made them. Apparently they're not according to somebody, so I'm just gonna keep calling them Brembo's, but that's that. I bet money that the six piston calipers from R1 Concepts would clear the wheels way better than the four piston Brembo's that are off the Hyundai Genesis up front. So if I could redo this and spend a little bit of extra money, I would definitely do the fronts with the R1 Concepts kit, without a doubt. So that's pretty much that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm sure I missed something. I always miss something that I have to say. Um, but huge thank you to R1 Concepts for working with me and, and helping me out and giving me a little bit of a discount so I can get these breaks and do the uh, video for you guys. I know one of the biggest things a lot of people wonder is like, hey, I did the front big breaks, but is there anything for the rear? This is the best kit. In my opinion, it, there might be another company that does it as well, but this is the best way to go. R1 Concepts accepts your order. They make the kit for your car and the kit will fit your car. And that's what's absolutely amazing. And I will leave a link to the description down below that you can just click on go where you can customize the kit and then request a quote to see how much it'll cost you. When you do do that, I, I do wanna ask you guys for one favor. 
if you guys are gonna request a quote or even end up buying them, let them know Full Throttle Auto sent you. I don't have like a quote or anything you can use on their website, but if you can just let them know Full Throttle Auto sent you, this way we can get companies to notice the channel and hopefully we'll get more companies to work with us to get even more upgrades for the Honda Accord that I can bring to you. But that's it for this video. I hope it helped. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the track day videos. I will be releasing those next. We're gonna have a vlog and then we're gonna have just separate driving videos. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to stay tuned. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Let me know why. And uh, I guess you'll see me in the next one.